This is President Joe Biden. On July 7, 2021, he visited McHenry Community College in Crystal Lake, Illinois. No relation. And spoke about raising taxes on the wealthy. Well, at least he tried to. 1%, if, you know, if we just, 1%, the, the, the folks in the top 1%. Sorry, Democrats, all sales are final. If they just paid their personal income tax, the same as it was under President George Bush, George W. Bush, that would generate $13 billion a year. It would raise the tax from what it is now, 35 to 39%. First of all, the top federal tax rate is not 35%, it is 37%. Joe Biden got something wrong. I know you're shocked. Second, Joe Biden is saying that during the Bush administration, the top tax rate was 39%, which is technically true. But also, he is implying that it was something that Bush implemented, which is not so true. From 1993 to 2000, the top tax rate was 39.6%. President Bush signed the Economic Growth and Tax Relief Reconciliation Act of 2001. This brought the top tax rate down to 39.1% in 2001, and 38.6 in 2002. Two years later, he signed the Jobs and Growth Tax Relief Reconciliation Act of 2003, which brought the top tax rate down to 35%. And that bill, part of the Bush tax cuts, set those taxes in stone for 10 years. And guess when they expired? During the Obama administration, where the top tax rate was 39.6%. Now, Joe Biden could have said, if they just paid their personal income tax the same as it was under President Brock and me, but he didn't because he's trying to fool you into thinking that 39.6% was like bipartisan or something. The same as it was under President George Bush. Now, old Joe is talking about raising taxes in front of a bunch of community college students because he's married to the world's greatest community college teacher ever, Dr. Jill Biden. You know, as the first lady, I'm Jill Biden's husband. Uh, I think you mean Dr. Jill Biden's husband, you sexist. As Jill would say, and she's a full-time community college professor while being the, sec the first lady. Jill's the second lady, the top tax rate is 35%. Clearly Joe thinks it's 2012. She often says any nation that out-educates us is gonna out-compete us. But the question is, who exactly are we worried about out-competing us. <laughs> I mean, but whatever, Joe Biden has the solution. I want to add two years of free community college for everyone. Here's a question. If you give everyone in the United States two years of free junior college, is it really going to make us number one in the world? Spoiler alert, <laughs> it won't. And we can afford it. I'll tell you how. Because it's free, right? I'll tell you how. That could boost earnings of high school graduates with low wage jobs by nearly $6,000 a year on average. The average annual cost of a two year degree in Illinois is $4,200. And that's not true. According to Community College Review, the average community college tuition cost in Illinois for in-state students is $7,932 per year. And according to a recent survey of tuition data conducted by collegecalc.org, of the 48 community colleges and universities in Illinois, the average annual in-state two-year college tuition was $9,222. But let's think about this for a minute. Biden is saying that if you attend and graduate from a two-year community college, you will likely make more money. And that's the thing that benefits the student in the long term, right? So logically, it should be the responsibility of the student to pay for that investment on their future, not the American taxpayer. And I should also point out that according to Community College Review, the average college completion rate in Illinois is 30%, and at McHenry County College, where Biden was speaking, the completion rate is only 29%. So that means if the majority of students won't graduate, then we're just throwing money away. And since it's being offered for free, that means it's of less value. And that means that you're likely to see completion rates go down even more. But you know, nothing like a return on investment, huh? And speaking of college, the Wall Street Journal published a fascinating article titled, 
financially hobbled for life, the elite master's degrees that don't pay off. Columbia and other top universities push master's programs that fail to generate enough income for graduates to keep up with six-figure federal loans. Recent film program graduates of Columbia University who took out federal student loans had a median debt of $181,000. Yet two years after earning their master's degrees, half of the borrowers were making less than $30,000 a year. Although some grads are faring a little better, including Zach Morrison, a filmmaker with a master's in directing and screenwriting. He claims to make $30,000 to $50,000 a year. There's always those 2 a.m. panic attacks where you're thinking, how the hell am I ever going to pay this off? Zach also worries about whether or not he'll be able to buy tickets for Springsteen on Broadway, and even has four devices waiting in a virtual queue. And in case you're wondering, yes, he was able to snag a pair of $100 tickets. Congrats, dude. At least he's being serious about paying off that debt, huh? So what did he get out of the film program at Columbia? <laughs> not much, apparently. So I think film education is broken into one of two different categories, the theory side and the production side. On the theory side, you watch a lot of Orson Welles and Jean-Luc Godard and movies that were made dozens of years ago that are stylistically irrelevant in 2020 today. So the best thing that Morrison can say about Orson Welles and Jean-Luc Godard, two of the greatest filmmakers in the history of cinema, is that they are stylistically irrelevant. Unlike Zach's video, which is loaded with lazy jump cuts and recorded in his parents' living room, located in Margaritaville, apparently. And on the production side, you talk about cameras and lenses and you make a lot of student films. So basically, Zach's schooling consisted of watching a lot of movies that he didn't appreciate and likely didn't understand and made a lot of student films. And now, Zach basically makes student films for a living for BuzzFeed. Sometimes I've lived a healthy life Sometimes Now I'm wondering what it's like Sometimes Well, at least that masters is being put to good use. Fast food. Next, there's Grant Bromley of Knoxville, Tennessee, who graduated from Columbia in 2018 with a master's in film and media studies. According to the journal, he had hoped to advance into academia after graduating in 2018. Instead, he moved back home with his parents in Knoxville, Tennessee for a year, taking a job at the TJ Maxx, where he had worked as a teenager. He now works at a TJ Maxx near Chattanooga. For now, Mr. Bromley earns around $16 an hour and can't afford to pay down his loan balance, which is $156,000, including undergraduate debt and interest. It's a number so large that it doesn't necessarily feel real, he said. So Grant can't afford to pay down his loan balance, but he can afford to be working on his third feature film in his spare time. And maybe that's the only way he'll ever be able to pay off his debt. With that master's degree, he certainly has the capacity to write and direct a film that will bring in the big bucks, right? So let's get an idea of his work and take a look at the trailer from his second feature. It seems ridiculous. I, just, I mean, I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying really hard and it just, I don't think it's worth it. I mean, he's an egomaniac. He's a narcissist. He was never like that in school. I just don't know when it, when it happened. I don't know what made him be like this. I can't tell if the background noise completely overpowering the dialogue is a technical issue or an artistic choice. Yeah, he's never going to pay off that debt. And finally, there's Patrick Clement a 41-year-old who graduated in 2020 with an MFA in film from Columbia and owes $364,000 in federal loans. In response to being featured in the article, Clement tweeted the following. I spent six months doing my due diligence before applying to my MFA. I'm not surprised, regretful, nor financially hobbled for life by my student debt. This is good so far. He's not a victim. He knew what he was getting into, and he seems to be owning it. 
I understood, as everyone who wants to attend a creative MFA, it is an investment in your creative career, not an investment in your financial future. Uh-oh. If you want to make money, do anything else, anything. Yeah, I don't like where this is going. As a society, we should be looking at creatives with a different value metric. Creative endeavors enrich society. Oh, don't, don't you see, guys? Patrick's doing us a favor. He's enriching society. Yeah, someone's full of themselves. When my loans are forgiven in about 15 years, I'll pay more taxes than Walmart, Amazon, Jeff Bezos, Trump, Apple, Elon Musk, and Michael Bloomberg combined. So let's get this straight. Clement's justification for taking out a loan for $360,000 and not paying it back in full is because of corporations and orange man bad. Got it. And thanks to the federal loan system being completely broken, he's probably gonna get away with it. And spoiler alert, you'll be the one who ultimately helps pay for it. Congratulations. And on that frustrating note, thanks for watching, sharing, and hitting that like button. Be sure that you're still subscribed to the channel. And as always, I hope to see you next time, if there is next time.